In this video, I'm going to take you on a wild adventure of game dev and life, sharing the last few dev sessions on my indie game Blood and Mead, as well as giving you an intimate glimpse into my lifestyle. Enjoy. I like to start my day with a strong coffee and some light shadow boxing, you know, to get the blood flowing. No other reason. Getting the blood flowing quickly primes my brain for a day of dev. Unity, you know I love you. So in my last devlog, I made major stylistic changes to my player character. The reaction from you guys was overwhelmingly positive. But I did have a few hecklers. Uh, sorry, not a fan of the new head and face. Hair is a bit emo and the eyes too comic and big and not fitting the character. Yeah, I wouldn't call it emo. If a strand of hair on the face is enough to make you an emo, yeah, I do need a haircut. But there are some things I could refine. Better eyes, cooler beard, and maybe some tattoos. He also got a nose job, some bushier brows, some character, and slightly scruffier hair. That looks much better. I leveled up the beard from not one, but three independently moving plaits. Creates a lot of fluidity and movement. I finished off with these back tattoos that reveal themselves more during certain animations. These relatively simple tweaks added a lot of polish to the character. Well, James, thanks for your feedback. I hope you like these updates. Truly. Thank you. Outstanding. Time for some fresh air. I laced up and went for a run to what I like to call the Cliffs of Regret. Because when they collapse under my feet, which they probably will, I will regret it. But what a view. I relaxed up here for a while doing some casual game design and planning before heading home to spend some time with the family. Woo! I snuck in some late night bug fixing and found an interesting issue where coins could attack the player. That's a hell of a bug. I was feeling pretty good on this day, confident to tackle a bold design feature, wall jumping. But I wasn't sure if I wanted the player to jump off just any wall at any time. This would completely break and undo all my existing design work. Instead, I prototyped a system where the player can only jump off ledges. The amount of black magic and voodoo that went into this system, radial overlaps, distance checks, platform effectors, it was nuts. And if you're a coder, you might relate to all these commented out attempts to make this damn system work. I then posted my progress to Twitter and got some great and valuable feedback from you guys in the community. I had a lot to think about, so I went rock climbing. What better way to channel inspiration and solutions? If you've never tried rock climbing, Go do it. It's a fantastic, gamified way to get in shape while having fun. Daddy is making a game. Oh, daddy is making a game. Will it ever be finished? Nobody knows. I added some weighted hanging animations, but then added a second animation for the times the player is hanging from the ceiling. That's right, much like with indoor rock climbing, the big decision was made to only allow the player to jump between specific points. This fairly simple feature adds a whole new world of level design potential. Oh, and if you're new here and like the sound of a bone-crushing Viking adventure, it's my duty as a solo indie dev to direct you to the Steam page, where you can wish this blood and need and get notified when it launches. And a big thank you to those who have already done so. Time to unwind. I took a train to visit my good friend and fellow indie dev Oliver Joyce. We drank beer and talked game dev, then drank some more beer, and then many more. We finished up with a succulent Chinese meal and some more beers. <laughs> For every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. I was feeling pretty lousy, so I went to the local gym to bump it up. Do it! Do it! Come on! Come on! Do it now! And like that, I was back in the trench with a new mission. I have these chests that drop important collectibles. But as I have it, there's a chance the player doesn't pick them up and breaks the game's progression. I needed to automate the collection sequence in a meaningful way. I decided to throw up an item collected panel piping in the data from an external JSON file into value objects and inject it into the chest. A bunch of particles and tweens later and I had a functioning system. It's looking good, but I need some audio to really sell it. I laid and sequenced different sound effects to match the panel animation. It's 
still felt a bit limp. I needed an adequate player character response. That's the one. But a developer's work is never done and I realised a fundamental issue with this approach. I needed a break, so I went out for some sun and fluffy time. I solved my earlier problem using some time scale magic, freezing everything but the player and the UI. It was a pain in the ass. I shifted focus to creating a fun exploding pressure plate. It's useful in forcing the player to move fast and can be composited with other enemies to increase the challenge. Cool. I had big plans for this day, but a mysterious package arrived. Diablo fucking 4. Now, there aren't many games that I'll sacrifice quality dev time for, but man, this is something else. The atmosphere, the world building, the brutality. It's special. But we weren't quite done yet. Every so often an indie dev needs to treat themselves. And what better way than the Diablo collector's box filled with blood petals, aged cartography and tools of dark conjuration. And while all these cursed objects are amazing, all I truly wanted was the art book. 300 pages of beautiful concept art and game design inspiration. Superb. The remainder of the day was spent geeking out over the new trinkets and practicing my barb impressions. This will be your last stupid mistake. My burden is too gr- The lords of hell are coming to devour our <laughs> The next morning a flood of new dark inspiration had been unlocked. I put it to use, creating a new evil sorcerer enemy, furiously reading his cursed tome and conjuring up mischief. I love how this animation turned out. I then added some particles and dark glyphs, but that's where it ended. What the hell? And suddenly, the sky wept. I was dabbling in forces beyond my knowledge. The rain subsided, so I ran. I ran hard, hoping to escape any pursuing hex. But it was in vain. On my return, new bugs had manifested. Hitting enemy shields was now bringing my frame rate down to zero? Spooky stuff. After setting my frame rate free, I channeled the remaining dark inspiration into a new simple enemy type, a fiery skull totem that can emerge from the ground and shoot fire at the player. <laughs> ah yes, the heavens had cleared. And I wasn't about to pass up the warm, gentle caress of the sun. Here we go. Whee! Alright, so I've got these meat chunks that fly off enemies during combat, but they bounce around in a strange way. So I spend time making these particles go splat when they come into contact with the terrain. <laughs> this little detail has made a big difference in how the combat looks and feels. And as so often happens, I got sucked into the polishing vortex, making it so the player can interact with these skulls and bones. It's a little thing, but it makes the player feel they are in the world, not just moving past it. I also made it so that meat chunks can stick to walls and ceilings too, particularly satisfying in tunneled areas. Delicious. But I wasn't done. I made it so that ceiling chunks stretch and drip blood. Yeah. And like that, my dev was cut short, stolen by housework. I had things to break. I had fires to start and fires to put out. I am a bit of a pyromaniac. I also crossed paths with a female redback spider, one of the world's most deadliest and capable of killing with a single bite. Fun. Once my mortal duties had concluded, I relaxed to some classical music and lazy dev. I was off to a solid start, but I suddenly realised I was procrastinating with low priority features. Classic indie dev. I grounded myself and shifted to some UI work. I'm in the middle of a major UI overhaul. UI is hard, and it's taken me time to get the UX and the design right. I'll do a full comparison video in the future, but here is a sample of the new UI design. It's a work in progress and it needs a lot of tidy up and proper sound effects, but it's almost there. 
So I hope you've enjoyed this window into my dev life. It took a lot of time to put this together, so thank you if you drop a like and comment. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next one. Daddy is making a game. Oh, daddy is making a game. Will it ever be finished? Nobody knows.